You don't have to be doing bookbinding and book restoration work for long before you'll come across a phase box. In institutional libraries, special collections and archives, the use of phase boxes and phased conservation has become standard. But what is a phase box and is it relevant to home librarians and amateur book restorers? I'll start with some history. Book conservation came of age due to a natural disaster, the flooding of Florence by the River Arno in 1966. Many of the city's great cultural treasures were inundated with filthy water, including many libraries of irreplaceable books and manuscripts. In the immediate aftermath, as the water receded, large numbers of volunteers from all over helped with the clean-up and emergency recovery, and these people became known as the Mud Angels. But for the real recovery, professionals from many fields were required, and teams of international experts rushed to Italy to help with the rescue of the severely damaged treasures. A number of bookbinders and restorers arrived from England. A number in this team had in common that they had worked with or were trained by Roger Powell or Sandy Cockrell. This event turbocharged the field of book conservation. The approach of individual assessment and restoration of books would just not work. Just knowing what approach should be used for restoration and conservation wasn't clear. These things had to be worked out and developed on the spot. Having developed new techniques and methodologies, some of the key members of this group ended up in the US at the Library of Congress. These included Peter Waters, Don Etherington, Christopher Clarkson, and Anthony Keynes. Peter Waters was appointed Conservation Officer at the Library of Congress in 1971. He realised the massive collection at the Library of Congress was undergoing a less dramatic but still damaging deterioration event due to poor environmental storage, intrusive and, and inappropriate preservation, and inherent materials properties such as acidic content. He realised that just like in Florence, an approach focused on individual items was inappropriate and a system based on the work developed at the Biblioteca Nationale and the Royal Library of Denmark was adopted. A whole collection approach was taken to conservation and factors such as environmental, which affects the entire collection, are addressed early and a triage and minimal intervention approach is used for individual items. Because it can be seen as doing things in phases, this approach became known as phased conservation at the Library of Congress during the 1970s. This philosophy has since matured and been widely adopted around the world. So what is a phase box? For a start, it's not really a box, rather a wrapper made of stiff materials such as cardstock. It's a protective enclosure that can be easily and quickly made that provides physical and environmental protection. Environmental control is a big element of phased conservation. But this can be hard in a home environment. But what you can provide is microclimates. The enclosure provides a microclimate inside the enclosure. In my office, I put my most valuable books in an enclosed bookcase, which also provides a microclimate. Waters points out the design is based on traditional Japanese or Chinese wrapper cases. A phase box can be seen as temporary protection until a later phase of treatment is enacted, but can also be thought of as long-term protection where the next phase is not defined. Most designs are best suited to small and medium-sized books as they don't provide sufficient support for large books. I have a collection of books where the theme of the collection is the bindings. Broken bindings are valuable in this collection as they provide access to otherwise hidden structure. I don't plan to restore these books and they're too fragile to leave on the shelf unprotected. But I also don't want to spend hours making clamshell enclosures for them. A phase box is the perfect solution. The book I'm going to make a wrapper for is a 1932 edition of Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy. To the Christian science faith, this is an important book by the sect's founder. To me, it's a nice example of a religious text 
in limp leather covers and hand gilt edges, including the rounded text block corners. I'll measure the largest dimensions of the book and cut a piece of 10 point card large enough for the wrapper. In the finished enclosure, the book sits on a central panel and the front is then covered twice, both horizontally and vertically. Thus the card is three times the book width plus two times the thickness wide and the height is three times the height plus two times the thickness. I take 10 millimeters from each dimension so I don't have to trim up the edges later. There are many variations in designs of the phase box or wrapper. Broadly I think there are two types. Single piece construction like I'm making here and two piece construction. The two piece construction has some advantages that make it popular in institutional environments. I'll demonstrate a two piece construction another day. Most of the designs don't have the corner flaps but I like having them. The design I'm demonstrating matches one used by Princeton University Libraries in the 1980s, but I'm sure common elsewhere. Once the card is cut to size, I place the book centrally and mark just outside the edges of the book and then make another mark, the thickness of the book, outside these marks on all four sides. I use a fairly sharp bone folder to score lines, the length and width of the card at all eight marks. I identify the pieces of card to be removed and cuts for the corner flaps. And then I make the cuts. One of the reasons the two-part construction is popular is that it doesn't have the waste from the corners. Also, all the folds can be done in the grain direction.
To help the box close well, it's nice to cut angled edges on the corner pieces. One of the important features of a phase box is that it's easy or foolproof to use. Thus the order the flaps close should be clear. An easy way to do this is to number the flaps. I don't number flap 1 as this will contact the book and I don't want any chance the writing will offset onto the book. I then make folds at all the crease lines and then place the book in the wrapper to make sure it fits. The last thing I do is cut a tab about 2 inches wide from the outside flap and a corresponding slot on the third flap for the tab to tuck into. This will hold the enclosure firmly closed. I'll also trim off the sharp corners from the tuck-in tab and all the flaps except the innermost one. A really nice final feature is to take a copy of the spine of the book, print it out and glue it to the spine of the phase box. I hope you've enjoyed today's video 
As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you are able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. To find videos I've made on specific topics or other projects, the best place to go is the DAS Bookbinding Video Guide. It's the index to the channel, and there's a link in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio!